the GOP has a master plan to criminalize being trans. And I know this is definitely news to everybody who's been following everything that's been going on with uh, Republican politics in the last few years. You know, it's it's perfectly normal. It's a, It's something everybody should be used to by now. Let's go ahead and cover it. But first, a little dose of sanity. Uh, this this weird world of fan art that y'all made. Uh, this one's from Makeru. Finally wanted to try my hand at making something, but I'm not at all an artist. Wanted to do something simple. Slime Cirrus. I need it to be known that Slime Cirrus says the correct words. So that's why he's making a... Whatever, Makeru. We're, we're going to the next one. Americhik says, may I present to you the council of words I'm not going to say. Make sure that Cirrus says all of the, again, words I'm not going to say redeemed. They all have that evil glint in their eyes because they enjoy giving him psychic damage. There's chat, the, the fucking dryer, the, the neck coin. Lord Dumpy is there and small, apparently. Timer Coon has two necks? Y'all are weird. The last one is from a Nubian. Said Slime Cirrus, uh, mute, mutilating in his bottle. Oh, okay. I don't know what mutilating in his body means. Mutinying in his bottle? Mutating in his bottle? Either way, as always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. And with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. So... This was submitted to me yesterday on stream. Uh, the GOP has a master plan for criminalizing being trans. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, Kitty Destruction says, what's on the menu for today? Uh, this. So most people are not aware. Yandreas, thank you about the follow. Most people are not aware of Project 2025. Or its playbook, Mandate for Leadership, the Conservative Promise. Let's go ahead and take a look at both of these. It's not enough for conservatives to win elections. If we're going to rescue the country from the grip of the radical left, we need a, both a governing agenda and the right people in place ready to carry this agenda out on day one of the next conservative administration. This is the goal of the 2025 presidential transitional project. The project will build on four pillars of that will uh, four pillars that will collectively pave the way for an effective conservative administration. Holy shit, there's a whole thing here. The actions of liberal politicians in Washington have created a desperate need and unique op opportunity for conservatives to start undoing this damage the left has wrought and build a better country for all Americans in 2025. It's not enough for conservatives to win elections. If we're going to rescue the country from the grip of the radical left, we need both a governing agenda and the right people in, in place. This is the goal of the 2025 Presidential Transition Project. The project will build on four pillars that will collectively pave a way. There's a 180-day playbook. It's the effort of a broad coalition of conservative organizations that have come together to ensure a successful administration begins in January 2025 with the right conservative policy recommendations and properly vetted and trained uh, personal personnel to implement them. We will take back our government. The 2025 Transitional Project is being organized by the fucking Heritage Foundation. <sighs> Most recently, the Trump administration relied heavily on Heritage uh, Heritage's mandate for policy guidance, embracing two-thirds of Heritage's proposals with just one year of office. Paul Danz, a former chief of staff of the Office of Personal Management during the Trump administration, serves as the director of the 2025 Transitional Project... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's got to be transitional. Or not transitional. It's got to be the Heritage Project. Glitchy says, this is why we need to vote Democrat. We need to keep the radical right out of power. It's it's really awkward, right? I look at Democrats and I scream from the back of my lungs, y'all are not doing enough. Y'all just kind of sit here and do the bare minimum nine times out of ten. But it is the lesser of two evils most of the time. And here we are.
here we are. Also, Naki Bree, why, why, why would you, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Naki Bree's dropped fifty thousand and one channel points to make me say, oh, well. in in the middle of covering this. What is wrong with you? Do you need? Do you need? Did your parents not not love you? What happened? What happened to you? Why would you make people say those words? So this was supposed to be during fan art? Yeah, but I wasn't looking at the actual redeems during fan art. Oh, boy. And then, of course, there's the actual mandate for leadership here. Holy fucking shit! This is 919 pages! Of constant bullshit. What the hell? Who has time to read this? Who's reading 900 pages of how to fuck our country? Jesus. Said so it's not bullshit, it's a detailed takeover plan. Oh, I know. I know it's a detailed takeover plan. I'm under I understand that. Said so who has time to write this? Apparently, it's evil masterminds. Call it what it is, I guess. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, see here. Do, 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 do. Funny toilet goes skibbity bam bam bam. Yes, yes. Skibbity bubbity d d. And then it escalates into giant mech battles. I don't see what's not to understand. Huh. Alrighty. All right. Now I just I just read the. Uh, yeah. So I've been writing fanfic for over a decade, and I probably haven't written that much. All right, let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. What else does it say here now that we've actually looked at the mandate for leadership or seen that it's a giant thing? Most people aren't aware of the playbook, but you need to be. In stark terms, Project 2025 reveals the conservatives' plan to enact a sweeping don't-say-gay policy that will effectively blot out all LGBTQ content on the internet, as well as any published material with LGBTQ content, no matter how benign. Project 2025 is a coalition of prominent conservative organizations that includes the Claremont Institute, Alliance Defending Freedom, Family Research Council, Hillsdale College, Heritage Foundation, Freedom Works, American Legislative uh, Exchange Council, American Principles Project, and dozens of others. The organization's goal is to lay out a first 180 days agenda for the next administration and to recruit conservatives to fill its position within the federal government appointed by the executive branch. The Mandate for Leadership is a 920-page document that details how the next Republican administration will implement radical and sweeping changes to the entirety of government. This blueprint assumes the next president will be able to rule by fiat under the unitary executive theory, which posits that the president has the power to control the entire federal executive branch. It is also based on the premises that the next president will implement Schedule F, which allows the president to fire any federal employee who has policy-making authority and replace them with a presidential appointee who is not voted on by the Senate. Yandrius, think about the follow. Oh, boy. So that basically means that even though we're supposed to have a balance of powers here, the fact that over the last 50 years, more and more power has slowly consolidated into the president's hands will get used to basically usurp other branches of government. To just undermine them completely. The document is basically a wish list for social conservatives and mega corporations. The business, uh, the business wish list calls for eliminating federal agencies, stripping those that remain of regulatory power, and deregulating industries. The president would directly manage and influence Department of Justice FBI cases, which would allow him to pursue criminal cases against political enemies. Environmental law would be gutted, and states would be prevented from enforcing their own environmental laws. The social conservative wish list calls for ending abortion, 
diversity, and inclusion efforts, and all protections for LGBTQ people, and, most importantly, banning any and all LGBTQ content. In fact, the mandate for leadership makes eradicating LGBTQ people from public life its top priority. Its number one promise is to restore the family and the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. They are explicit in how they plan to do so, and you'll see in the paragraph below. They do plan to proceed by declaring any and all uh, LGBTQ content to be pornographic in nature. Jesus fucking Christ. So, I made a post on my community tab a while ago, and I'm going to be following up on that post with a video, but the post basically went, hey, people who actually really are gung-ho for Trump, people who really support Trump, could you tell me your reasons why? Could you tell me your reasons why? And one of the comments on there that I'll be covering in my video going over the responses to that post, one of the responses basically boiled down to, think of the ways that our lives were improved under Trump. Gas prices were lower. So I turned a blind eye to the things that were happening to the LGBTQ population. Can I just, can I just ask a very serious question? Honestly, if you're the type of person who goes, hey, my business made 10% more money, or hey, my gas prices were a little lower under this president, and you think that's a an even exchange for stripping people of their human rights, if that's a thing that you honestly think, then I sincerely hope that every single ounce of time that you went through high school, you had nothing but days of swirlies and locker room gut punches. I'm sorry, but people who honestly have this mentality of I spent less money so the human rights that were getting violated are okay deserve to be bullied. J just straight up. Those types of people do not deserve to have comfortable lives. Because they have already admitted that other people do not deserve to have comfortable lives so that they can pay 50 cents less on their fucking gas bills. And yeah, that may seem really, really mean. That may seem incredibly asshole-ish. But I'm perfectly fine standing by that. I am 100% okay standing by that particular comment, that particular statement. I do not think people who have taken it upon themselves to argue that other people deserve to be less happy or have their rights stripped away so that they can cut costs in a couple of places should be able to just be happy from that point. I just don't. I just don't. I, it, I do not see it. So not to mention the depths of IQ one has to go to to think the president has much to do with gas prices. The president has a little to do with gas prices. They can they can enact some policies. They can open up uh, reserves of oil that we have. There are things they can do. But, you know, they're not perfect. They can't do everything there. Let me go ahead and do here. I actually have it right here. I'll, I'll take a look at the entirety of this comment again later, but... I come here two weeks late with an actual stance as a supporter of Trump as a central-leaning Republican. No, you're not. Don't lie to yourself. I feel the need to very much point that out. I support LGBTQ rights. I am aware that not all Republicans' policies are good, just as not all liberal policies are good. Ah, yes, the enlightened centrist, he speaks. I supported him because he didn't ignore us. Yes, the fuck he did. Remember, 90% of the nation isn't big city, which is where a vast majority of where liberal-leaning folks live. People like you think land votes. Most of the country is farmland, rural places where you have to drive an hour to get to your nearest Walmart. California is the biggest Republican voting state, but it is drowned out by cities. Yeah, that's called democracy, buddy. That's how it works. His ability to make our lives better, think of gas prices as an example, was huge! You know, public transportation would solve that problem. But we, we don't get to have that as easily in America because we're dumb. 
A lot of people say he's stupid or whatnot, but the man has run a large company, no, he's ran many companies into the dirt, for a large part of his life, inherited or not. He made business-based choices, not political choices. He literally banned the transes from the military. Don't pretend they weren't political choices. Not all of his policies were the greatest, but this is why I'll vote Republican regardless. Sadly, the left view is very much locked into those that live in the big cities and the suburbs. We out here in the middle of nowhere suffer under liberal presidents, just as I'm sure city folks will say they suffer under a Republican one. And that's where it is. Right, so all two of you versus the thousands of people in cities. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I cannot. I cannot. A group of people that pisses and moans and whines and bitch fits about getting a tyranny of the minority and having their lives changed for the betterment of LGBTQ people who are a smaller percentage of the population don't get to also bitch fit about being a smaller political minority and needing better representation as, as, a, as a matter of course. Y'all don't get to have it both ways. You don't get to have your cake and eat it too or you die of political diabetes. But I will continue going through all of those posts when I do my video on those responses. But let's take a look here. It says, Pornography manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexuality, uh, sexualization of children, for instance, is not a political Gordian knot inextricably binding up desperate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual libertation, and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. All trans people are bad according to this. This is where I want to go ahead and give another point. So, uh, funny fact, so uh, my my current partner, Saki, who is actually streaming right now, y'all can go to Saki underscore Nightshade on Twitch to find her Twitch channel, but y'all know that my partner, Saki, is trans, and her previous partner uh, was very, very Republican, which confused me. How do you be with somebody for years? How do you be with somebody and claim you love them and then also support every policy that would literally have their rights eradicated from the books. How do you do that? How do you manage that level of cognitive dissonance? How do you do that? Can you, those of you who are stupid enough to do that, those of you who have partners who are gay or trans or what have you, but still call yourself Republicans, how do you manage being this harebrained? How do you do that? I want to know. Because the human condition is such that I can't fathom that much stupidity. Because that would require me to go down to that level. But, let's go ahead and take a look here. Florence says, Sir, as cognitive dissonance is easy, really easy to live with, your brain will just do it for you. Yeah, I know it will. But the minute that you, the minute that you realize it, right? It, it stops being cognitive dissonance. It has to stop being cognitive dissonance once you think about it for half a second. When you hear a policy that would revoke the rights of your partner who is trans from going in the military and therefore being able to afford HRT, when your partner wanted to go into the military and afford HRT, how does it, how does it square with you? How do you do that? How do you manage those things? I also have a friend of mine who gave me a long list of uh, issues with trans people in the military that I need to read through still and respond to. This just reminded me of that. But so these people call their own uh, call their own God communist. Do they? Do they? So it's funny how uh, Trumpies. Known to have a lot with the Mafia, uh, given how Trump is known to have a lot to do with the Mafia. Sir, if cognitive dissonance is a major American problem, it's why you have modern uh, anti-popes and the Benedict conspiracy. Yeah, I know. 
Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is an additive, as, uh, is as addictive as any illicit drug and as psychologically destructive as any crime. Pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classed as registered sex offenders. And telecommunications technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered. So, this is a good point to remember... It is a good moment to remember that in states that are more red-leaning, that have a higher percentage of red-voting Republicans, things like gay and trans porn are seen at higher rates. They are viewed at higher rates in those states. Every single time that the Republican convention, that CPAC, comes to town... That primarily male-centered and led convention? Gay escorts make a lot of money that weekend. Another fun bit of public information. These people who freak the hell out about all of this stuff tend to be the same people that consume it. It sometimes makes me feel like their fetish desperately needs being trans or being gay or any of this they need it to be taboo otherwise they can't get off anymore they can't get off unless it's taboo they need it to be the unexplored uh, sexual purveyance of provocuity they need that they need this i the, the psychology behind it is objectifying and weird so when they talk about pornography, this includes any content discussing or portraying LGBTQ figures from the children's book I Am Jazz and the Tango Makes Three to the Trevor Project's suicide hotline. We know this by looking at how don't say gay laws have been implemented in Florida. This is literally their model. It's been tried in Virginia. It's also arguable that LGBTQ parents would be subject to arrest, imprisonment, and being put on sex offender registries for exposing children to pornography simply by being LGBTQ and having children. So, uh, I'm just going to say this right now. If these policies start getting enacted, at what point are we just okay with violence? Like, I'm, I'm not trying to call for violence. I'm not trying to suggest that it's the thing that we should do. I just have to ask, at what point of your human rights being stripped away does that become okay? At what point is that alright? Don't answered that in the comment section because you might get put on a list just just food for thought because every other time human rights have been stripped away from people that's what it's come to like, like again we're america right our rights to taxation with representation literally led to us getting violent with the british the holocaust literally ended in a lot of fucking violence towards uh, Germany. Like, j just in general, when this happens, violence is the end result. When the civil rights movement was happening, it was not peaceful. Hell, even pride parades began from the Stonewall riots. So they, they'd hit first, that's all I'm about to say. Well, the minute that they started enacting those laws... The minute that they start pushing those laws through, that's hitting first. It would also likely criminalize any therapist, doctor, or counselor who provides affirming therapy to trans youth. Indeed, the document makes it explicitly clear they want nationwide bans on abortion and access to affirming care for trans youth, while calling for conversion therapies to be only uh, to be the only available treatments. I swear to God. If any of this shit tries to pass in Georgia and they try to desperately restrict the things that my partner has access to, I'm going to do some shit. It could be argued as well that people who are visibly trans in public are going to be considered pornographic or obscene because they might be seen by a minor. Man, it's really easy to contemplate violent thoughts reading this article. It's very easy for me to contemplate violent thoughts here. So do you need me to set up escape lines to Europe? Uh, Ellie, Cl uh, Ellie Klein, 
check out Rainbow Passage. Uh, Rainbow Passage is actually working to be its own underground railroad for trans people. I actually have a working agreement with them that any clips from my channel can be thrown on their uh their YouTube channels, their social media channels without any uh, compensation or anything to me as a way of making sure that more information can get out there as as it can. Florence says, define being visibly trans, please. Yeah, I don't know what being visibly trans looks like. Is it is it a guy cross-dressing? Is that what being visibly trans looks like? Or is it like... I go out with my girlfriend and everybody calls her ma'am here in the Georgia South and nobody can tell because HRT's fucking magic. Is that being visibly trans? Is that illegal now? Like what what is what is, where is the line? Where is the line? There's also the matter of the internet. Any service provider that transmits or receives uh do, 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 do. Hold on. This understanding of intent is in line with the call to eradicate transgenderism from public life, which, of course, was something we covered as well. We may actually cover that again later, just so people remember. There's also the matter of intent. Any ISP that transmits or receives data about transgender people could potentially be liable if conservatives have their way. When you read the final sentence of the exerted paragraph, the clear intent is that the same would apply to any social media company that allows any positive discussion or depiction of transgender individuals. Man, that Elon Musk buyout of Twitter within six months of him saying that he was switching to the Republican Party? Man, that's feeling... I'm feeling real tinfoil hatty right now. Taking one of the biggest social media organizations that created its own verb... And switching your political parties right before having to buy it with all this happening. Man, it's it's weird. It lines up in a really weird way. I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to feel about that. The organization that drafted the mandate for leadership understand that blue states, which have sanctuary laws for transgender people, are unlikely to comply. It's difficult to imagine California arresting and prosecuting teachers, librarians, doctors, therapists, bookstores, virtual or physical, uh, LGBTQ parents, and especially LGBTQ people merely for existing in public. This is why they include the following paragraph. Where warranted and proper under federal law, initiate legal action against local officials, including district attorneys, who deny American citizens the equal protection laws by refusing to prosecute criminal offenses in their jurisdictions. This holds true particularly for jurisdictions that refuse to enforce the law against criminals on the left's favored defining characteristics of the would-be offender, race, so-called gender identity, sexual orientation, etc., or other political considerations like immigration status oh so if you're a sanctuary state for immigrants they'll also find ways to ruin that this is calling for the executive branch to use the department of justice to threaten prosecution of any local or state officials if they do not cha uh, charge lgbtq people and their allies with crimes under the pretense that they are breaking federal and state laws against exposing minors to pornography if people at the department of justice refuse to go along with this then they can simply be replaced under schedule f while the exerted paragraph above includes references to immigration the fact that it explicitly includes gender identity and fits in with the previous calls to designate anything trans related as pornographic clearly telegraphs their intent so their uh racer says they're targeting california directly watch california hit back hard yep i can't afford to move i can't but you can bet your fucking ass if something like this goes down and things try to get as uh, things try to get as bad as they're trying to push here in this 900 page takeover document <sighs> I'll figure something out I'll figure something out
The results of these actions... Uh, let's see here. Do-do-do. The fact that it explicitly includes gender identity and fits with the previous calls to designate anything trans-related as pornographic clearly telegraphs their intent. The result of these actions will be perhaps the biggest power play against states' rights in American history. And the threat is clear. If blue states refuse to turn on their own transgender citizens, then the federal government will do everything in its power to decapitate the leadership of those states using the Department of Justice. Conservatives are making the bet that individual district attorneys will not risk prosecution and prison on behalf of a tiny, despised minority. They're betting that state governors will not be willing to risk both prosecution and a constitutional crisis over transgender people. The question remains, will they be able to get all the way past the Supreme Court? Perhaps not in the short run, but over time, if given the power, they will replace current justices with those they handpick to give them the decisions they want, just as they did to end Roe v. Wade. They already have a majority of people. They already have a majority of, of conservatives in the Supreme Court. They could probably do it with what they got right now. They could do that. Conservatives at the Claremont Institute have stated that they intend to seize power for generations and remake the U.S. entirely in their image. The mandate for leadership is an announcement of their goals and the roadmap to achieving them. It's, it's literal, insane, world conquery Saturday morning cartoon villain shit. So you know how you know how every conspiracy theorist in the world is like, yeah, look, look at the Georgia Guidestones. It says uh, it says things that make me make me scared, and my tinfoil hat goes burr. This is a 900-page takeover document of the United States. This is a 900-page document talking about the takeover of the United States. If you are willing to vote Republican after knowing that this document exists and what it's trying to do you are willingly throwing minorities under the bus. You are willingly doing that. That is a thing you are actively choosing to do with a literal fucking fascism manifesto staring you in the face. If you are the type of person who goes, but my gas prices. Again, I sincerely hope you get to relive every single day that a school bully ruined your life. Every single time. And make no mistake, this isn't just a if Trump gets in office thing. We, we, we don't have to do the whole, ah, but if we just keep Trump out, no. This is, this is now an every Republican thing. This is the manifestation of the Southern strategy. This is everything the Southern strategy were trying to do. This is everything the Southern strategy was trying to accomplish. When you try to make your voting base so that you can just have numbers, when you appeal to a voting base of U.S. bred Nazis, white supremacists, homophobic dipshits, and xenophobic American Southerners, then this is the end result. This is the projected outcome. This is the only possible thing you can have. Pineapple says, are we going to have another civil war? I don't know, though. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that can happen under the current setup that America has. I hope it doesn't. Otherwise, we have to apologize to Tim Pool. So the petroleum are ultimately uh, responsible for raising gas prices here. Florence says, anyway, I don't know if this document is being taken seriously by Republicans at large. How influential is the Heritage Foundation? The Heritage Foundation is one of the major think tanks for the GOP. They are taken as seriously as the fucking Koch brothers when they deliver millions of dollars into your inbox. JS Dog CD says, I do think there's a non-zero chance. 
it's a there's a there is a non-zero chance of practically anything happening. But if shit like this keeps on going, there is a non-zero chance of violence in America that can escalate. That can escalate. For Vosh's chat, I am going to go ahead and link. I'm linking this for my chat, and I'm linking this over uh, for Vosh's chat as well. And then this is the actual mandate. For those of you who want to pour through it, there is the mandate. And I'm throwing it at both chat so that y'all have it in case y'all need it. If this is something that you need to go through yourself, if it's something you want to read through for yourself, that you can stomach for yourself, then that will be provided there. I will also try to provide this in the edited version of the video when it goes up on YouTube. Hopefully, this can, uh, get to a couple people and maybe change their minds? I don't know. I'm being a real condescending asshole here, but I don't feel like that's undeserved. I, I don't. I... As more of this stuff comes to fruition, more of this is terrifying. And if it's me who exposes myself to this every single day seeing this shit and getting terrified what does it ha what does it do to somebody who's just discovering this for the first time what what happens but that's about all i've got for you here let me know in the comment section below what you think if you scour the document and find anything that is enlightening or something that it needs to be called direct attention to then let me know Again, the document will be linked in a pinned comment. It will be linked in the description below. It will be there for you to use if you need to. I may be covering this again with Vice Rhino just so that it gets exposure in areas uh, outside of this. And I may be covering this particular document more than once because one video in a sea of videos versus a recurring theme, maybe we can get this caught on by the algorithm. That's another thing. Not just for channel health reasons, but... Either take this document, the original uh, post that I was reading from, or this video, any of them. Share them with anybody you think needs to hear this or needs to know about this. Because, honestly, this is the type of shit that people need to have in the back of their minds when they go to the voting booths. This is something that they need to have in the back of their minds as the presidential campaigns are running. Because if they don't, then people are going to do that stupid thing where they're just like, I vote Republican because they make my gas prices go down. Boy, I hope my daughter doesn't turn out to be gay. Anyway, as always, everybody, insert end of video tagline here. <laughs>